Hey. So, hi again. <laughs> can you change oh, the yeah. icon of your camera a little bit so we can see your face? Um, just a little oh, bit. Oh, you're not able to? Okay. Yeah, yeah this is Are good. you able to see now? Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. Oh. So Mayuri, uh, I, I know you because of um, this uh, urban sketching workshop that you did. And, um, you know, I was, I was really thrilled to see um, this different type of uh, artwork, which I had not seen it before. And, you know, I've been on so many trips and then I always wish I could capture this moment um, or that place that I'm seeing, but it's, there's never time to do it. And you have this super unique way of... Uh, uh, drawing. So can you tell all of us a little bit about it? Like uh, what what uh, inspired you to do this urban sketching and a little bit more about it because I, I know that I didn't know about it till a few months ago. Okay, so Dipta, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, for joining me. I think you were one of the surprise participants. I, not you, actually Rahul. And he's the youngest one I have ever taught. And he's brilliant. Uh, he's a 12 year old, uh, so Dipta has a 12 year old who came to my workshop and he's so brilliant in art. Um, uh, what inspired me for uh, urban sketching is I was traveling quite a lot, like six, seven, eight years back. And for four, five years, I was just roaming around here and there, um, all over the world, uh, Australia, UK, US, everywhere. And what, uh, what Fascinate, like, fascinated me was the kind of architecture that I was seeing. Uh, and I was always like an art person. I used to do a lot of uh, oil painting, um, acrylic, watercolors. But, you know, I didn't have all those materials with me when I was traveling. So struggling right there. So that is when I discovered urban sketching. So... Uh, I, it was some, uh, somewhere I read about it and then that particular person said, you just need to go and purchase a black pen and some drawing sheet and that's what I did. I was in UK that time and I just purchased a black pen. That also I didn't have that time. And, <laughs> and uh, three, four of them and then uh, just started sketching. So I would sit around uh, in these plazas and beautiful places where uh, people are uh, having carnivals or uh, small uh, markets. So I would just sit around there and then sketch them. And uh, that is how I started building this up. And the best part was like, there was no mess that was created. I was just, uh, I can just do it with any sort of paper and pen in my hand. And it was more about the concept of how quickly you are able to uh, uh, make it into an art. So uh, that was what uh, inspired me. And my inspiration was everywhere. Just uh, the thing was how to put it into my paper. So yeah. I practiced and practiced. And now I think six, seven years it's been. Uh, last year I started conducting uh, workshops um, and just trying to spread that out around. Because not many people know about it. It's pretty fairly yeah. new for a lot of people. Um, yeah. but, um, it just gives me a lot of joy. It's sort of a passion of mine. Um, my profession, I'm, I, I do freelance uh, designing. I am an artist as well as a content writer. Um, uh, I'm an IT grad <laughs> by education. I'm an, uh, a civil engineer, actually. Uh, oh. with, yeah. <laughs> so... That is there. Your love for architecture yeah. also a little bit, yeah. <laughs> it's there. Because of your architecture love, you kind of went into civil, maybe. Yeah, and a lot of things, you know, uh, do not, uh, somehow later on you start realizing that how things start fitting in, falling into place. Like uh, I was traveling, that sort of brought me to urban sketching. But fitness is also another thing that, I have actually worked with startups uh, which were in fitness and now I'm working with Eka. So I'm just so happy about it because somehow all the pieces are like sort of coming together in this yeah. because everything, whatever knowledge you have, you can use it in mel multiple ways. So um, I'm glad uh, 
and this is working out yeah those of you who don't know mayuri is the one who does all of our creatives you know the wonderful posters that you see every day and all the content she uh, helps put together all of these creatives and uh, uh, one thing that i wanted to mention about urban sketching is what i really 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 liked is it doesn't have to be a fabulous subject right it doesn't have to be something phenomenal that you draw uh, like my son drew my mother in law's house and it looked so beautiful it was just a piece of art with you don't need to go to like vidhan sauda and make a really amazing picture it's just anything that you see it comes out so beautifully it's easy so uh, yeah he really loved that uh, workshop that you conducted so i wanted to know a little bit about how you are um, handling uh, the lockdown because i know a lot of artists like you said you were, you love to travel uh, get a lot of inspiration when you're out right so how are you dealing with that aspect how is your creativity getting stimulated now so i think yeah, you know internet <laughs> is there <laughs> <laughs> so I'm virtually traveling through art right now. It's just the like you know there are places I wanted to go to and they're shut down right now. It's so sad, but you know virtually I'm traveling to those places. I'm helping like I'm trying to help other people also to see it my way that how I see art and art uh, in totality has helped me a lot during this lockdown period. Um, in general, I think. the daily news is what sort of makes you very anxious i feel very anxious like in the morning or in the late night i would like just get a peek of or a glimpse of news because you know one of your relatives is somewhere stuck somewhere in this world so there is somebody out there who you care about and that's why the world news is so relevant right now for you because yeah. earlier you couldn't even read other other countries news as right so uh that is one thing which bothers me a little but uh, and the other thing that going outside in nature <laughs> just being <laughs> stepping out and just uh, feeling that breeze though you can have that in the balcony but still there is something very different about going to a park or just walking out and going to the nearby grocery store and just talking to other people so that's that's one thing i do miss uh but yeah art has uh, been a lot of uh, uh, sort of support for me and i do a uh, lot of breathing like um from a lot from a, i think an year and a half or something i have been practicing a little bit of breathing exercises and when i join you your sessions i really feel that i can actually improve and um i uh, start start getting that uh, you know uh, therav in my breathing what like mm -hmm. you know yeah. to be able to control it much better like how you tell us to like uh, uh, exhale or inhale in 1 2 3 4 like that <laughs> you know <laughs> okay now for as a way you should be totally your breathing should be totally out and you know that practice i'm slowly trying to get there but you know it's difficult but i think that helps a lot in the morning uh the sessions i do with you uh with eka uh just uh, gives me a really good boost in the morning to start off my day with like full energy and feeling lighter and just forget about everything and let's do some work let's be productive uh yeah. let's create something uh that's the energy i get okay very nice so uh, since you've been uh, doing some practices with us like we did that 21 days of uh, live sessions every morning uh what were the practices that you connected with maybe from an artist point of view maybe just generally like you know what what were your uh, highlights or you already said you do some breath work but are there any specific meditations that you enjoyed doing more than others there was one session where we did a uh, rapid vis visualization and uh, and you we did it a couple of times and every time i did it it was different so i loved it because it sort of challenged me and the other thing beautiful about that because a uh, rapid vis visualization session was that uh, you were telling us to actually 
uh, put our mind to use when we are actually not doing anything. I was just still. You were asking me to draw leaves in the in actually absolute vacuum, and you know my eyes were uh, my. I, I think my eyeballs were doing that what a brush pen would do, like actually yeah. going like this, going like this, and I I don't think that kind of. Uh, um thing i felt before uh it it really uh, um instills a lot of uh, imagination to your thing or okay. oh, your leaf could be green and your the other person's leaf could be yellow so how yeah. how are they imagining it and how a sunset that you painted for me is not the sunset i am painting for myself so oh i'm not seeing that picture or uh, is Uh, how is my mind uh, picturing a cycle cyclist go by or things like that so you know all sorts of things sort of uh, makes you more i feel more imaginative and uh, to create that how without even moving a muscle you can just imagine anything that's how fantasy world has come up right oh guys i think eka got sort of disconnected i'm going to invite them again sorry i don't know what happened the connection dropped somehow <laughs> Okay. No, no, so, um, you're back. Now. So that's interesting. Yeah, and it's really what is there in your subconscious mind, right? Like, if I give a cue about a door, um, many times, like the door that you have seen is the one that's going to come up. Or exactly. sometimes, if you, uh, if I give a cue of something that you've never seen before, you have to draw it out of thin air. But it's always influenced by what you have seen before. Maybe in a picture. Maybe you've been there. Maybe it triggers a memory. um you know so many different things can um affect that uh, meditation yeah so are you uh, it's one of my favorites too rapid visualization um so it's pretty challenging i think yeah it is challenging <laughs> because it it makes you do some things and keeps the mind right. active um right. i uh, wanted to get an idea about um how your work day is like do you sit a lot do you because i wanted to do a small uh, practice for you which i mean i'm uh, i'm assuming like a lot of your friends who are artists also are on the um, live session with us and i wanted to kind of get an idea about how your day is now and if i can you know design a small practice for you all to um relax you a little bit maybe and you know we can do a small session together so uh, what is your day like uh so in my day i am um, i am mostly on a lot of devices which is what i want okay. to avoid i want to get into <laughs> paper and pen and that's the thing i do uh, consciously also so whenever i get a task i rather note it down in a piece of paper instead of putting it down okay. on my notes keep or in an app uh so checklist for the day or something of that sort and uh, try to use more of paper and uh, but in general it uh, involves a lot of devices and um yeah i do sit a lot because of course uh, we are designing or even sketching um uh, uh we yeah uh, that times we are sitting around i usually try to be in a very comfortable position i have a small table which i keep anywhere actually uh, while sitting in my balcony also i keep that table my laptop is on that uh, any other like ipad or something also is down that and i start sketching and even if it's a piece of paper also i sketch using that small table i have um uh, instead of sitting on a study table which is what uh, rohan doesn't like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh, we just kind of make do with whatever is there and we sometimes you know like if you're comfortable in a space or little lazy to move you just kind of make do with whatever is there right in front of you yeah that's absolutely right. right so it sounds like you know a lot of um, forward movement of the body so maybe you know like a little bit of um, tightness in the front and then maybe a little bit of um 
rounding or something in the back may be happening through the day yeah definitely i i think because i'm always bending down bending yeah. down and working like this like as if i'm writing or something uh when with laptop it's okay uh but most hmm. of the sketching part requires you to bend down and do stuff uh so yeah. and yeah and when i get involved then then i sort of forget about my back uh as such how am i sitting or am i shoulders okay and things like that so yeah definitely there is <laughs> this uh, part of the body sort of overworks at times <laughs> So I'm actually gonna uh, recommend doing some uh, shoulder opening, and you know, like right. we do um, every day, we do a meditation. But it's very difficult to for people to just sit down when they're stressed and directly go into a meditation. It's very difficult to concentrate and uh, focus on things, um, especially like if you say breathing when you're anxious, your breath is so uh, irregular, or it could be a little fast, or it could be shallow. and the last thing you want to do is bring attention to that right so we try usually to do something first which kind of opens up the body and then your stress is in the body release and then we move into um some breath work and then meditation because it's very easy for most of us to connect with the body but not so easy to connect with a breath or the mind it becomes very difficult because it's sort of subtle uh, you know as you go deeper but physical body is like so much uh, more easy to connect with so we'll start with a little bit of sure. movement today so we'll start with sure. the shoulders um sure. even though my phone was should be good and hopefully that i'll just switch off that one light because it's distracting of course the last switch that works is the last switch that you do is the one that works okay all right so we'll start by interlocking the fingers behind us and then push the fist down towards the floor so those of you who are also joining in if you're not able to hold the hands together if you're not able to do this interlocking you can use a towel or a strap or whatever is handy uh, between your hands to bring the hands together and then push your hands down towards the floor and lift your chest up and look and stay here for a couple of breaths feel the chest opening up and the shoulders stretching the front of the shoulders stretching so generally we tend to hold a lot of tightness in the chest especially if we are leaning forward and doing sketching or typing and now as you breathe out you're going to bend forward and lift the fist up just bend a little bit forward and lift the fist up yeah that's it and take a couple of breaths here Good. Inhale and come up now. Lift the chest, and I will do it dynamically, breathing in and lifting up, and then breathing out and folding forward. So this is going to be like a dance. So inhale and lift the chest, and you have to follow your own breath. Your music is your breath. So follow the rhythm of your breath as you fold, you exhale, and when you're breathing in, you lift the chest up. few rounds like this breathe out and hold and breathe in and lift the chest up and one more time breathe out and bend forward and breathe in and come up now release your hands down and just notice how you feel in the shoulders so when we're observing it's best to just sort of close the eyes for a moment or two and just notice how the physical body feels and gently open your eyes and the next one is going to be a little bit of side stretching um this always helps to relieve any stresses in the lower back uh, so twisting and side body stretching helps us to kind of relieve this area release this area so we'll start with the side raise movements so i'll move back a little bit placing one hand down to the floor next to you and lift the other hand up breathe out and bend to your side take a couple of breaths here and feel the side body lengthening and on your next in breath come all the way up 
Switching to the other side, bring the opposite hand down, lift the other hand up and lean towards the side. So one thing you want to watch for is when you lean, uh, sometimes the shoulder comes up. So allow that lower elbow to bend, keep the shoulder relaxed. And then slowly rise up. We'll do this a couple of times, going back and forth between the two sides. Breathe in and come up. Breathe out and bend to one side. Breathe in and come up. Breathe out to the other side. Again, here you're moving with your breath pace. So whatever your rhythm is, if it's slow or fast, just follow that rhythm. And naturally, as you uh, tune in, you'll be able to move at a slower pace maybe. And if it doesn't happen, that's okay. You can go at your natural pace. That is what will give you the most comfort. Do another couple of rounds like that. Round, yes. And come up, and the other side. Good. And last set. And notice if your head is coming forward when you bend. Try to keep the head in line with the rest of the torso, the upper body. And slowly come back up and release. So um, when you're done with both sides, you'll sit up tall. And again, notice any difference that you feel in your uh, back or in your shoulders. And slowly open your eyes. So the next practice that we'll do is a rapid visualization practice because I know that you like that. So everyone can just um, close their eyes and sit comfortably in a chair or on the floor, whichever position you are most comfortable in. And just gently close your eyes. I'm going to give you instructions. Uh, mainly I'll be calling out different um, cues and you do your best to visualize the image or if I'm talking about a smell or a feeling, you're going to try your best to kind of conjure it up in your mind. Um, and you're going to experience all of these different things that I call out in your mind. So get ready. Gently close your eyes. In your mind's eye, see a large leaf. A chilly morning. A beautiful flower. The feeling of an afternoon nap. A colorful scarf. Your reflection in a mirror. Children laughing. Crystal clear water. An ancient monument at the top of a hill. The patter of raindrops in a forest. The feeling of gratitude. Feel the right half of your body. the left half of your body. A butterfly resting in the garden.
a steep slope. The warmth of the sun. The face of someone in deep meditation. Your earliest memory. Your favorite meal. An ornate door. And now slowly come back. Feel your body resting against the chair or the floor. And slowly connect with the sounds around you. Join your palms together in front of your chest and rub your hands briskly. Place the warmth on your eyes and your face and slowly open them with a smile. So that was our rapid visualization practice, especially for Mayuri. <laughs> so I want you to so know a much. little bit more about um, your uh, practice. Like, um, do you, if you do a practice like this, do you feel a difference in um, the art that you do afterwards? Um, I know some days you've done it a few times with me. So I'm wondering, like, do you see an impact on the days where you don't do a practice and the ones where you do? And how do you feel um, in the two different, on two, two different days? I think the best thing that happens after uh, doing a meditation is my uh, mind becomes blank. So now it is ready to get started on something new or mm. ready to get started on something. And, you know, you have certain, you might have heard earlier uh, from someone that sometimes you are trying to solve something or do something and uh, sometimes it's, it's best to just, and you're not able to do it. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's best you just leave it at that, do something else and come back to it later. And then your mind will start sort of open and your problem will so start getting uh, easier for you to handle. Yeah. So I think that's what it does. In general, whenever you get up, we get up with a lot of WhatsApp messages, um, news, uh, yeah. uh, and the thought process of, oh, I have to do uh, cleaning, cooking, this, that. So many things are running into your mind as soon as you wake up. So when yeah. I do for 15, 20 minutes, I'm like just blank. And then the first thing I do is prioritize things. Okay, yeah. um, this needs to be get done now. The second thing, this is the priority. Then that is the priority. So I can just prioritize all my work and uh, sort of start getting, okay, uh, let's, let me start everything from start. Or I was not getting ideas on this before. Probably now I will get. So I start thinking afresh. So I think that's what I feel after uh, uh, doing this practice with you. I had a question actually yeah, to ask. Okay. You've been doing this for a while. Uh, but so I do it while listening to you, right? Uh, how do people who, like when you meditate, are you listening to someone uh, when you are meditating or are you actually giving your mind these uh, commands that, okay, think about this and then doing it yourself. How, how does it happen with people who meditate on their own? So I always had that confusion and wanted to clear that. <laughs> yeah, so it's a very good question. Uh, when I first started off, I, were, I, I needed the uh, guided meditation because I would constantly keep getting distracted by thoughts that came up in my mind or 
um, you know, like disturbed by the th- sounds around me or, you know, d- different things. Like as soon as I would have a thought, I would kind of react to it and go away. So I couldn't stay with the meditation. But if I had a guide, guided meditation, if there was a tape that I was playing, it was uh, much easier for me to bring myself back. Because the main, um, uh, you know, like the obstacle I would say for me was that if a thought came into my mind, I would just follow it and run with it. And um, it was difficult for me to realize even that I had had a thought, right? I would get so involved in it that I would just run with it and just continue on with that. Or if there was a memory, I would just re-immerse myself in that memory and relive it or, you know, th- that kind of thing. Or if it was a planning or scheduling thing, I would just, you know, immediately be like, oh yeah, 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 I have to do this. Let me think about it. Um, but the guided meditation helps when you're a beginner, when that's happening a lot, where it brings you back. But now when I do the meditation, unless I'm doing a new technique, in which case I use uh, the guided, uh, but otherwise I have my own favorites that I do and I do it by myself. It becomes second nature. Um, Sometimes I use a a, a timer, which kind of reminds me there's like um, a bell or something like that. Even on the Eka app, app we have it, like a self-guided meditation where it just... uh, gives you a bell at every 30 seconds or one minute, two minutes. You can set it up however you want. I use something like that. Uh, But my most common uh, practice is yoga nidra. And for that, I just, um, I know the steps and I just follow the steps. Um, I don't uh, always use, uh, if I am, if I'm very disturbed and I know that I won't be able to do it by myself, then I use a recording. But usually um, I just practice by myself. And it also depends, right? The, some people, the favorites are chanting. Chanting is their favorite way of doing um, right. uh, focus, practice, focus practice. So if it's chanting, then you, know, you can do it by yourself. Um, you don't need the guidance. Once you learn the chants, you kind of uh, do it by yourself. And it, that itself becomes that rhythm. And it has that rhythm and you learn it and then you kind of stay with it. Um, yeah, for, uh, for each person, it's different. Some people do years with um, a tape. Uh, some people start doing by themselves after a while. But it is very challenging to do it by yourself um, in the beginning. But that's kind of like, you know, um, everyone has a preference, right? It's not like there is only one way to do it. Uh, th- there is nothing like that. You can use whatever tools you need. The point is to kind of help to relax the mind, and balance the nervous system so you can um, have the rest of your day you're in that state of mind where you are balanced so it doesn't matter whether you use a recording or you do it by yourself but initially I would say it's good to do it with a teacher uh, with a guided meditation practice like if you use a tape or whatever it's good to do it several times um, and then you can if you want to you can stop but it's not required to stop it uh, depends on the type of meditation. Yeah. Yeah. I think that question was like uh, sort of bothering me a lot of times because I was thinking, okay, suppose one day I don't have you to tell me what to do, then how am I going to do that on my own? So, uh, yeah, probably practicing it with guided meditation for a longer period of time, then you can sort of control your thoughts. Because for me, uh, now also, when even in rapid visualization, when you did, a moment, like when you are asking me to think about my childhood or uh, the earliest memory that I had, my, uh, to run back to that moment and while running back, somebody, I meet somebody in between, or my <laughs> sister or my brother. Uh, and I sort of branched out and yeah. I was like, oh no, I need to get to my earliest memory. <laughs> so I think that happened with me. I was just running at to the earliest memory. I was like, no, this is not earliest. They're just like, it's like that flashback thing happening in this family and counter property. Yeah. So one thing that you said was controlling the thoughts. Actually, there is, um, thoughts will keep coming. It just never uh, stops, right? I mean, it just keeps on coming. But you can kind of uh, start recognizing that you've had a thought very quickly sometimes like i was saying earlier in the beginning i would just get drawn into the thought Uh, but 
with practice, you can recognize, oh, I have had a thought. I acknowledge that I've had a thought and then I come back to my focal point. Sometimes it's the breath, sometimes it's a chant, sometimes it's whatever it is, like sensation. You're focusing on something, right? You come back each time to that focal point. Um, and that is what we're trying to reduce. Um, acknowledging or noting that you had a thought itself. That amount of time between having a thought and realizing that you've had a thought, yeah. that is the time we're trying to reduce. And I yeah. always say this, like I, my teacher used to say it, that don't think of it, don't think of a thought as a distraction, then it becomes a negative thing in your mind. It's, we're not trying to control the thoughts in the beginning. We're just trying to come back and we're using that as a practice. Uh, you may notice that, you know, if you are working out and if you're going every day, every, it becomes easy to go every day, but you skip one day, then suddenly that kind of, you know, is tempting more than the going every day part. And then you may skip another day and another day. So the uh, point is to build the connection of coming back to your focal point. And that way you can apply it to anything that you're doing during the day. Uh, you, uh, you're doing something and then you realize that you've been distracted by something else. And that, you know, you're um, working on X and then you realize you have to do your laundry or something. Uh, but if it's a priority thing, yeah, of course you'll say, okay, I'm going to go do that and come back. But if it's not a priority, you'll just say a, a mental note. Okay, I have to take care of this after I finish this. Um, right. So that is that, that uh, connection is what you're trying to build. So to come back each time and to strengthen that um, willpower to stay on your task. And that is what will help you to focus better. Uh, recognize that you've gone away and come back. Hey, it's almost like you're interviewing me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to ask you these questions, but you, we were not online together ever. So I think this is a good opportunity. I'm just uh, doing yeah. a pulling the leg. <laughs> okay. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, thank you for having me. You're about um, open sketching. And I know you have uh, workshops that you do regularly on Zwende and... Uh, I've personally loved your sessions, so definitely uh, recommend uh, Mayuri's uh, art workshop. And uh, there were a few comments also that said, um, really love how you're sharing your art and how you explain your art. And it's really you, very uh, something very special about you that when you um, take the session, you uh, cover every aspect of uh, drawing. And that's what's very interesting because sometimes it's difficult to find uh, it's easy to find people who do their work really well, but someone to teach it well to is, you know, sometimes very difficult to find. So you do that very well. So thank, thank you, you thank and you. Um, hope to see you uh, again online soon, maybe at your you know, workshop. <laughs> definitely, right, bye. definitely. Bye. Uh, does bye. the audience, actually, I wanted to check, does the audience have any questions for um, Mayuri? The urban sketch mural on the wall at Zwende is my favorite from Mayuri's work. I agree with that. The one in the Thank you. on the stick, stairwell, right? On the wall in the stairwell. That's it's really um, very striking. And uh, I saw the making of video the other day. You had posted it. <laughs> you, know, you were standing on a ladder. How was that? Like drawing, with, standing with your arm up high. It must have been. You know, a lot of arm exercises. Just constantly, <laughs> and then obviously, um, so when I do art, uh, I feel it's very meditative for me because I'm actually uh, concentrating on each and every line that I'm making. And as you talked about focus, my focus again comes back to the sketch, how it is looking, how it is beautiful or not beautiful or as per perspective or not as per perspective. So like, uh, so that focus point for me is, becomes that and as I teach in my urban sketching classes also there is a focus that in your every artwork that you make you need to uh, draw the eyes of the viewer uh, towards a focus point because you probably cannot draw everything so you just yeah. need to put that focus in your drawing and show yeah, you have Great. a very good balance of the empty space and then like a part you generally like, you know, put a lot of detail in one area and all. It really draws your attention there and whatever, you, you know, uh, you want to spotlight, it's very apparent. 
sometimes the paintings and pictures are so busy you don't know what to look at uh, yeah. but in urban sketching i really like that you know you can very uh, easily highlight one particular area it looks so and the rest of it doesn't look bland or anything it still looks good everything looks good but then you know where the artist wants you to look i don't know uh, nobody has asked any questions um uh, good to know about uh, sketching i think we'll uh, end the session then great Bye, great Mary. thank you for joining Bye. us thank you so and, much uh, thank you for a lovely session if <laughs> you who uh, like the meditation go ahead and uh, check out our app eka meditation we have uh, a lot of uh, different types of meditations and we have courses in them and you can learn it from scratch uh, totally guided handheld uh, all the way through yeah okay. and the best part about it it is that you need not like think too much you you will start noticing the difference as you go on with it you know meditation or anything which you relates to your breath or your body doesn't come easily right so yeah. once you taking it and just sticking to it right the will power as you were talking to about then you will start noticing the difference you feel calmer in your uh, work you will start feeling more focus in your uh, job that you're doing so i think it will be great yeah. if people join that yeah. thank you and for doing the free sessions also for teams and groups so uh, you know if you have a team your office team that you want to do a meditation session for uh, we have a 30 minute free session that we do live for you uh, you know um, so do contact us on the eka meditation uh, page Bye Mary. Bye.